Hi everyone, Dave here. This is why you don't give up and why you keep looking into things when you feel led to do so. This chamber, when I started the test, was 36.1 degrees Fahrenheit. The purpose of the experiment was to see how much cooling I can get for how many watts. I dropped this chamber to 25.8 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm wondering if you can guess how much power it took to go from 36.1 degrees Fahrenheit to 25.8 degrees Fahrenheit. 0 0.8 watts, which validates some of my ideas that I had. I wasn't too sure if I was thinking wrong or not, but 0 0.8 watts to gain a swing of temperature that high means a lot because 36.1 degrees Fahrenheit might be considered maybe a refrigerator or a cooler. But to drop below freezing for only 0 0.8 more watts is ridiculous. And it validates some of the ideas I've had and some of the theories I've had. So I'll try to get this together in the future to be more coherent, more clear, maybe do some DIY videos. The whole idea is to have solar power refrigeration that we don't have to have compressors and pipes and high pressures and refrigerants. What I'm looking for is cooling per watt for a given space. And that's what a refrigerator is. It's a given space or a freezer. And it takes a certain amount of power to cool that down. Well, all the machines I've seen that run with Peltiers are quite uh, weak when it comes to cooling. They use quite a lot of power, but they don't have a very good cooling effect. What I'm trying to do here is get more cooling for the same amount of watts or less watts. I really believe that Peltier modules have the capability to put DIY solar power refrigeration in the hands of the average person. But they are much overlooked and often dismissed. If you look at the way Peltier modules are usually presented on YouTube and generally used in the world, it doesn't seem like it's very effective. It doesn't seem like they're meeting our needs. My goal was to look further into Peltier modules and elements and see, is there anything more that we can get out of them that we're not already getting? Specifically, keeping DIY solar power enthusiasts in mind, if there's a grid down situation, maybe you would want a simple refrigeration system that didn't really have a lot of moving parts, maybe just a fan, and didn't rely on refrigerants and compressors and copper pipes and brazing pipes together and all that stuff. So I set out to try to solve some of the problems, and the number one problem to me is how much cooling you get per watt that you put in. If you can improve the amount of cooling, or hopefully freezing, that you get for every DC watt of power that you put into the refrigerator or the freezer, then you're getting somewhere. This was towards the end of the day. A little extra information. The test I'm doing right now is about 38 watts of power to get 16.3 degrees Fahrenheit. And that beat my last test significantly. A negative 8.7 Celsius. And it's very close to the last test which is about 14 degrees Fahrenheit. However the bottom line is that these ideas are starting to show me how to get more cooling for less watts. Which is exactly what I'm after. Well just one more update on the work here. It does appear I've made a breakthrough. So this chest chamber is currently at 14.5 degrees Fahrenheit. There's the temperature. And the Celsius Rio is in minus 9.7. This is a very consistent test for the most part. I don't change the chamber itself too much. I pretty much leave it the same. And this time it's only taking 25 watts to reach that temperature. The last time I did a test like that and reached 14 degrees Fahrenheit in this chamber here, actually it took me 55 watts to do that. 52 to 55 watts. That is a huge difference. We're talking about almost twice as much temperature drop for half the power. That's ridiculous. And so I'm careful with my words and I don't want to create false hopes. But it does appear that my theories have paid off and are indeed being validated. And I ignored everything on YouTube. I followed my own path. So I think I'm going to have to try to get this together in some kind of a DIY friendly format. Create some kind of a refrigerator prototype. I actually was able to get the temperature down to 11.1 .1 degrees Fahrenheit and I'm only using a teeny bit more power. I think 2 watts of power additional to reach 11.1. .1. And in Celsius that is minus 11.6 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to move on to the next idea that I want to test. This idea is kind of a combination of several. By the way I appreciate all the subscribers and all the people who have supported me and been encouraging this work. Appreciate that. I'll try to get this work into something more coherent and uh, possibly with a prototype to demonstrate it. Due to my health and other factors, this work proceeds along at a snail's pace. I wish it was faster, but it's just not. So thanks for your patience, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you all for watching, and I hope to be back soon.